So next up we have Kreskov's algorithm, which is actually one of my favorite algorithms because it's a greedy algorithm. So the whole idea behind this one is basically it treats your graph as a forest. So it says, okay, you have your graph, you have all your different edges in it and everything like that. What we're going to do is we're just going to search the entire graph for a minimum edge and we're going to add it and we're going to slowly build up our tree by building up from a forest situation. And to explain, to understand how I'm explaining it, you have to remember how a forest looks. So remember, a forest is made up of a bunch of trees. Or it could be made up of one tree. It doesn't make a difference, essentially, once you, you know, the one is going to have disconnected components in it, and the other one, you're not going to have disconnected components in it. So where in your forest, all your disconnected components are trees. So the idea behind this is it searches through all your edges, it finds the one with the minimum edge and it shoves it into your tree. So it shoves, shoves that entire edge and its vertices into your tree. Then it goes back to your graph and it says, okay, that one's gone. And then it looks at the rest of the graph and it finds the next minimum edge and it shoves that into your tree. And it just follows that approach until it has enough edges in it and it has all the vertices of your graph. And then it's done. So let's just go through that approach written down. So step one, we select an edge of minimum weight and we shove it into our tree. Place into tree. Then next up, we go back to our graph and we select another edge of minimum weight from the remaining edges of that graph. So we you look at the graph as if the edge that has already been pulled into the tree is no longer there and we look for the minimums. So we select an edge of minimum weight from the remaining edges and we place into our tree and we place it into a tree along with one important rule because I spoke about the fact that we were referring to or we building up a minimum spanning tree from like a forest approach. But this also means that when we add our edges, we have to make sure that no cycles are created. So we can place it into the tree as long as it does not form a cycle. So there's a rule here. We place into tree as long as as no cycles are formed. And then we repeat until we have n minus one edges. Okay, so this one is kind of fun, particularly if you're doing it by hand. When you're doing it by the computer, you're gonna to have to remember that you're gonna to have to test to make sure that no cycles are formed. But again, it is a greedy algorithm in that it searches everywhere. You know, it goes through this pro this approach. So let's go straight to an example so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so our first example, we're going to use the exact same graph that we utilize for prims so you can see the difference between them. So here we have our full on graph. Again, we look for the minimum weighted edge. So that is CD, which is one. So we shove that into our tree. So we have CD, which means this year is no longer a part of our graph. That, that red part, not just the vertices. The vertices can chill. So that is no longer there. That is not in our tree, so we consider it no longer in our original graph when we're performing our search for the next ones. So then we search through again, and we say, okay, what is the minimum edge? Neglecting, obviously, anything that is in red at the moment, because that's gone. It's now in our tree. So you say, oh, sweet. Well, we have DB as 2. So we put that in. So we say DB. We put it in and we make sure that no cycle is formed. You can clearly see that no cycle is formed, so we can actually remove it from our original graph. So that's gone as well. Then we look again, we search through the entire process. We've just found the minimum number that is three. So when we do that, we have a D, a D is three. And again, we make sure that no cycle is formed and we remove that from our, gra our original graph. Then we look through again and we say, okay, 
the minimum number here in this case is five so we have this situation occurring and we put that into our graph so we have b and we have five and we have e and you make sure is there a cycle no there isn't so that's why we could put it in there and then we're done that's it we're over we're through so here again we have a weighted tree of one plus three plus two plus five which you have eight nine ten eleven so again it has the minimum spanning tree weight of eleven and we utilize the approach of Criscoll. okay let's do one more example using Criscoll by looking at this graph so again we first look at the lowest edge weight which is cd again i know i could have used a different name so we have cd so we have cd sitting in our tree now with weight one then we look for the next minimum so our next minimum is either bc either ad or yeah those are the only options so i'm going to be difficult and i'm going to just add a b because i want to show you how you're not necessarily building up as a connected tree straight away it can be a forest and then eventually it'll get to a tree so in this case i'm going to select a b because it has the next minimum weight and a b at the moment is not connected anything so there we have so on this side here it is a forest at the moment so this is what we're talking about when we say the crystals algorithm builds from the forest approach to a singular tree okay so then next up we look for the next minimum edge which happens to be c b so and this is when you have to start really checking to make sure does it have cycles does it not have cycles so you put that one in and it is bc it has a weight of two that has a weight of two just by the way so there's no cycles for me so we can put it in then we have to look again and we can look again we look at three so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to add a e because no um yes let's go for it let's add a e okay so if we add a e we have three there and what you'll notice at the moment is that you have four edges your graph was five vertices so you take me done so there is your tree now remember we spoke about the idea that not all minimum spanning trees are unique so yes, in this case, we could have also had B, E. So we could have had a situation where we had C, D, that B, C, the A, B, 2, and we could have had B, E, which is 3. So that is, and the trees will have the same weights. So the weights of this tree here, let's call this T1, is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3, which is 5, 6, Seven. and if you look here the weight of t2 is 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 which is again 7 plus i can't count that is actually a 2 just by the way i can't read my own handwriting so it's actually 8 here and it's 8 here as well so 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 1 is 8 please make sure that you can read your own handwriting unlike myself okay so here is an example of you could choose your selections and in this case you have it's not a unique tree but you'll notice the minimum spanning tree weights are the same they're both equal to eight okay okay so the final example you're going to look at is just a very small graph but it's going to hopefully show you how you need to double check for cycles so again you select your first edge with minimum weight so i'm going to select CB, I could have selected BD, I could have selected CD, I chose BC. So BC is now on our future minimum spanning tree. So now we look for another one of minimum weight. So in this case, I'm going to select CD. So CD, that's one. You just don't forget to put the edge there of one. And I just want to keep it in color okay so next up you look for the minimum weight so in this case the minimum weight here is again bd but now if i had to add that so if i had to add bd to this graph you're going to see it's going to create a cycle so that's a big no you can't actually add that one so you move on and you look for the next 
minimum weight. So in this case, you look at now at all the twos. So you can either add AB, you can add AD, or you can add CA. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't create, none of them creates a cycle. So again, just a reminder, make sure it doesn't create a cycle. So I'm going to add CA. Okay. And I can stop here because I have it, it's order four. And here is three edges. So remember, you know your tree, the number of edges in your tree, the size of your tree should be three if the order of the graph is four. So you can stop at this point. So you know you finished. So the weight of this tree is equal to two plus one plus one, which is equal to four. But the size of the tree is three. 